be broken. I'm tired of the same dilemma. I'm tired of the same old thing. I'm expecting God to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And that's what God wants you. He wants you in the place and position in your life that you expect God to do some great things for your life. Touch your neighbor said it's been a challenge. 2014. I went through some things that were designed to take me out. I went through some things that were down to take me out focus, to take me out course, and try to boy with God has predestined in my life. But I'm coming to some predestined people that can rise up in their spirit and say, God, I thank you that you allowed me another year. Come on, somebody. And that that the devil tried to do God to give God the praise that it just didn't work. Uh, he lost out some things in your life. It was a design to derail you. It was a design to stop your operation. But you gotta rise up in your spirit and give God the praise that I am a overcomer. And I got into overcomers in here today. I feel like giving God the praise. The book of Isaiah, real quickly, I feel the book of Isaiah, uh, the 54th chapter. And somebody give God the praise, the book of Isaiah. And it was amazing to me that we talked about, amen, this is the year of expense. Yeah. And you got to expect to expand. And I told you, if you're not expecting nothing, you're not going to receive nothing. And this, in this hour, in this dispensation that he's taking us into, we got to have a spirit of expectation. I mean, you got to ask God, God, give me a spirit to expect you to do what you said you can do. Because see, God is not going to force himself. He's not a force for God. He's not a God that ain't going to break through your wheel. You've got to say, whosoever will, let him come. And if you're not willing, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And see, a lot of you can be willing, but you just not obedient. So he ain't gonna bless you because you you got to be obedient. And when you obey what God say, and the obedient part came through praise. And see, he was trying to get you to the point amen, of true praise. Because when he was about to release you, he was gonna be in the praise. I wish I had somebody with you about to praise. He could have done everything that you wanted him to do if you would have just praised him in spite of what you're out feel somebody about to get it tonight. I feel somebody in Determined in their spirit that I refuse to go in 2015 with the same mindset that I have. The woman of God talked about, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody said, you got to take a different mindset. You can't have the mind that you had in 2014 and expect it to embrace the promised land. If you want to embrace the promised land, your, your mind, your mindset must change. You can't have an Egypt mentality when God trying to take you to Cana. So I said, he trying to take you to Cana. How you going to go to Cana when you still got an Egypt mentality? You still thinking like you think when you in Egypt. And God should be come, supposed to be transitioning and transforming your mind. Uh, somebody said he's supposed to be in the book of Isaiah when you got to see, man. I like the book of Isaiah. is very, uh, it's very, uh, Profound because when you look at Isaiah, Isaiah was the minor, he was the major prophet. That's all right, all right. And, and when you look at Isaiah, he had a difficult task. Yes, he did. Somebody said he had a difficult task. A difficult task. Because he was sent to a people mm. that was in a place of complaint. Right, right. He was sent to a people, come on, somebody, yeah. that had left God. Yes. They were still trying to worship him, but they weren't yeah. with God. Y'all ain't helping me up here. See, you gonna worship something don't mean your heart isn't what you worship. That's why God said he is a spirit. And then the worship you must worship him in spirit. And in truth, you see, for so long we've been trying to make people worship God. But you can't worship something that you're not connected to. And it's hard to tap into the supernatural when you don't have the supernatural. See, when you got the spirit of God, it's not hard to connect with God because God is a spirit. And it's not hard to connect with a spirit being when you have his spirit. So some of the time we're trying to tell people to worship God, they can't do it. Everybody can praise him because he said let everything they have breath praise you the Lord. So praise is not a hard thing to do. But worshiping God is hard because their flesh cannot enter into the spirit. Now they have to be a but when you got the spirit of God, you could have tapped into the spirit realm. It's not hard to come up in here and get 
in this spirit because we got this spirit. We try to tell people to get in something that they don't have. And that's the, that's the fight that we have. Because the Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are foolish unto him. Am I right? So we got too many times we say worship God, but you can't worship something that you don't even know. So Isaiah, let me let me let me give you a foundation. Isaiah, Isaiah was a prophet. And Isaiah was a prophet, amen. Here. He he was the latter day prophet because because most of the most of the kings and most of the priests has got corrupt. Uh-huh. And the prophet Isaiah was to stand for the prophets, to stand before the priests, and a man, the king. But because the kings was corrupt, the priests was corrupt. Come on, somebody. And they was afraid to tell what the Lord said the Lord. All right. All right. Amen, somebody. Come and on. in the beginning, amen, Isaiah was very like. But his message, it became difficult to hear. Because he kept on speaking judgment. He kept on speaking, telling them to return back to God. Because it was a whole nation. That had got away from God. See, this is not no Christian nation. It's Christian in this nation, but it's not a Christian nation. Because we are be to say one nation unto God. If this one nation unto God, why we take prayer out of school? Oh, y'all ain't helping to why we take prayer out of everything else, but we say this is one nation unto God. See, they can take prayer out of school, but they should take prayer out of the people. And we, we got to understand, come on, somebody, that we got to be a people that love. God, that will pray to God. And the problem we have, too many people don't have a relationship with God. See, a lot of people are, 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 are operating in the form, and that's where the children of Israel they was operating in the form of God, but denying the power they were. Because, amen, they was worship son, but they were not connected to God. And because of the children of Israel got in disobedient, they got in shitty areas. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. So God allowed them to go to captivity in Babylon. Am I right? For so many years because of their disobedience. And by like someone said disobedience will cut you off from the purpose and the will of God. When God got purpose on your life, when God got something for you to do, what God wants you to do, He wants you to be, have a passion for what you do. You know, a lot of people don't have a passion for what they do. They're just doing it out of duty, but it's not a delight. So when you're passionate about what you do, you give it your own heart. And a lot of people they're just doing it because it's good to do it, sound good. But it's a blessing when you do it, when you're doing it for your heart. See, if you're praising God for your heart, you get the results. You don't leave here, come on, so like the same way that you came. But if you're doing it just a good to come, Pastor say, do it. Uh, if I don't praise him, I won't get rebuked. If I don't praise him, come on, so like, and then, and then they're going to think I ain't saved. Come on, so like, uh, But if you, you say you want to praise God, if you love the God, you want to praise what you love. Somebody said, you want to pray what you love. So somebody said, I'm in the process of expanding. I'm in the process of expanding. So Isaiah was called to Judas to bring the nation back to God. Because they had left God in their heart. And do we got to know you can be here but not be in God. You can be praising God, but not loving what you praise. Come on, somebody. And so here, God covenant people that God was in covenant with. And because they was became they became a prey to the enemy. And because they were surrounded with so many false prophets, they were surrounded with so many false teachers. Come on, somebody. That's true. So many prophets was prophesying good stuff yes, to them. Yes, yes. And they was giving them a false sense of security. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on. They was coughing the amen sin areas. Yes, yes, yes. They were prophesying to them and know they was in sin. Yes, yes. Y'all ain't helping me out. Yes. They was telling them what they wanted to hear. Yes. They had engineers. Yes. Uh -huh. They were telling them the truth. But they was get offended. See, people ain't offended at you. They're offended because of the truth. That's right. And see, the book says the brother is offended. It's harder to win than a strong city. The disciples, he had, he had more than 12. He had seven. Because the Bible said even the seven got offended and walked with him no more. Then he turned to Peter and the other 
twelve, he said, We all also go. And Peter stood up, he said, Where am I going? You have the word to eternal life. And that's what we told him under my destiny is connected to you. He said, I ain't about to blow up my destiny because the seventy went. And the question is, what made the seventy get offended? The seventy got offended because Jesus said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you can have no part of me. In other words, what he said, if you don't stay connected to the body, y'all listen, you ain't going to have no part of it. I don't see nothing with hard with that. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, what's up hard with that? They just didn't have the revelation of what he told them, and they got offended because they couldn't understand it. And the book said they walk with him no more. Touch it, they said, why don't you cause you to separate? Why don't you cause you don't want to walk with somebody to tell you the truth? Y'all ain't having me up in here today. So they walk with him no more. Somebody said they walk with him no more. So here, let me, let me, let me hear the children of Israel is in a place of bondage now. They're in the place that they have left them. And the prophet now is returning yes. back to Judah because Judah was the praises. Okay. But even the praises, come on. See, when the praises stop praising God, when the praises, see, you put a praise in you and you stop praising God. Judas was the praise, it represent praise. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. And what God, amen, was doing, he was trying to call them to get back to praise. Yes, trying yes. to get them to get back to worship. Because yes. long as they was praising God, they were staying out of hell. Yes. See, it's hard for you to stay connected to God and praise him too. The reason why you lost your praise, because you done got in some areas. And the devil got you to the point making you feel bad and don't want you to praise God. I don't care what you did yesterday. I want you to know it's a great a new day. And he said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And when you come through the door, not that let nobody make you feel bad. Act like you don't got a right to praise God. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know all that the Lord has brought you from. And when you break up the door, you ought to enter to his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. And you ought to be thankful. And you ought to bless his name. Somebody say, you ought to bless his name. You ought to bless his name. So because of their disobedience, they was a man excelled to Babylon in captivity for so long. And the prophet came, somebody said the prophet came, to redirect their heart back to God. Somebody said to bring them to a place of repentance. Yes, yes. Because they felt what they was doing, that they was all right. So you can be so insult. That's right, right, right. And you are getting comfortable yeah. in what you doing because you think it's right. Yeah. Y'all be helping me up in here. You get so comfortable not praising and worship God. You don't think that's right to do because you're around other people that don't like to praise Him and don't like to worship God. But when you are a praiser, you can't help but to praise Him. Now, you don't like to be around nothing that don't like to praise God. When you're a worshiper of God, you want to be around to worship Him. Yeah. And see, when you're real praise, you ain't got nothing to do. When you feel it, because it's about feeling. If you see it, trying to feel it before you can praise it. Because sometimes you don't even feel saved. You got to know that you're saved. That's why Joel said, One thing I know that my Redeemer, he's still living. I feel like he's coming up in peace. One thing I know. 